I'm not good uh, doing tests, so in, in the Kahoot, uh, <laughs> I have obtained very, very bad uh, punctuation. And for this reason, I focus my research on artifact variation and reduction, because it's not easy to have a Ricardo in, uh, <laughs> in all research groups. Uh, we have the, the lack uh, uh, <laughs> to have it. Uh, to have him, but um, this presentation is about the artifact rejection and reduction, and it's focused on the signal processing. Uh, during this um, session, uh, we have uh, we will present I will present uh, some of the main uh, algorithms or um, uh, methodologies uh, to manage uh, uh, artifacts. Uh, mainly focus on the EEG, but uh, some of them uh, uh, it's possible to, to apply to for for other kind of uh, biological signals. This is the, the outline of the presentation. Uh, uh, I I will uh, start with the artifact rejection uh, by means of the thresholding. Uh, in this case, uh, it's not the the um, the, the suitable option. Uh, uh, if, if if we reject uh, some some time some uh, some interval of data, uh, we lost all the information, the artifact, but we also lost uh, uh, the the brain information. For this reason, um, then uh, I will uh, explain different uh, strategies for artifact reduction. But it's the 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 target of uh, of our analysis, okay. So let's start with artifact rejection. Uh, the goal of artifact uh, rejection uh, is to reject or bad channels or bad epochs or trial is the same uh, segments of time in the in the signal. Um, and the goal is to identify this kind of artifacts and remove it uh, from the uh, from the data in order uh, to, to try to preserve uh, the neurological information. Uh, the first step to, to, to do it is uh, to segment the data in some pieces of information. Um, uh, I try to apply different methods um, to determine if this kind, this piece of information uh, is, at artifact, uh, is artifactual or not artifactual. Uh, or is this channel is an artifact uh, channel or not? And then uh, try to um, uh, to remove it. Uh, the more simple methods is the thresholding. That that is, uh, we have an artifact, so uh, we determine uh, a threshold based on on the data, and if uh, any point time point of the data. Uh, is higher than this threshold, we remove all, all the all the segment. Or, or if uh, the, if a channel has a lot of uh, a lot of uh, periods with um, very high amplitude, we we propose to remove uh, this channel because it's a, an artifact channel. Uh, we can use this method for another pro, uh, approach to identify outliers. In this case, uh, we are not focused on uh, remove all, all the segments, only to uh, identify the outliers, and then we can uh, manage uh, these outliers, okay? But for perform this, for to, to obtain a threshold, we need uh, a, feature, a feature or a metric, okay? Uh, I, I, I will explain there. The drawbacks of this uh, kind of uh, method, um, uh, not all artifact con contaminated data uh, may be rejected um, because there are uh, a wide variety of, uh, of, of artifacts, uh, as, as we can see uh, in, the, in the previous presentation. And, and the if if we uh, remove a lot uh, uh, more information that uh, that the necessary, uh, we can uh, it can lead to wrong results and to uh, mistake conclusions. So uh, it's a very important step. 
uh, some metrics that uh, we can use. Uh, we can use the amplitude of the or the range, actually the the difference between the the minimum and the maximum in the temporal scale, the variance uh, of the activity in this channel. For example, the variance is very interesting to to analyze by bad channels, for example. And this uh, amplitude for range is more is more suitable for uh, for uh, reject trials or or epochs. And also, we can use uh, another uh, measures uh, based on the time course, that is the kurtosis or the joint probability. And there are uh, two measures that there are, that there are based on, sorry, that are based on the probability distribution. Here, uh, we can have um, uh, an EEG signal from uh, or less uh, 60 channels and we have performed uh, some analysis um, to to determine uh, if uh, if uh, some of the channels is at the channel or not and we have applied uh, the these four metrics the range the variance the kurtosis and the joint probability and you can see that all of them uh, we can obtain these uh, outliers okay but for example, there are another because the, these outliers that are very very high. There are very uh, there are some orders of magnitude the difference between these outliers and the the main data. But uh, different the different methods uh, you, we can we can uh, search some different um, um, uh, channels in this case that. Uh, we can we can have some doubts about them, and each metric has a different sensibility for different kind of, of artifact. How can we detect this this artifact? Uh, we have the metric, uh, these four metrics, but then uh, it's necessary to apply some statistical um, uh, statistical analysis. Uh, one of the common uh, statistic analysis that uh, we can perform over these the kind of features is the set score. Set score. Um, uh, the set score uh, is a metric that is um, uh, useful when we have a normal distribution. Okay, when you have a normal distribution of our data, uh, we can compute the the theta score uh, uh, subtracting the mean of this data and divided by the uh, standard deviation and we have obtained uh, this theta score that uh, uh, the range of the theta score is more or less between uh, men's men's five to uh, to five more or less and this kind of theta score are related with the the cues of the probability distribution. Um, so uh, we can uh, establish uh, a threshold uh, in the theta score, okay, in order to uh, ensure that, for example, uh, the 95% of the data are included in this normal distribution. So if we uh, if we situate the theta score the theta threshold in uh, men's three to three for example or men's four to uh, minus four to four uh, you can you can uh, depending on the data on the data you can uh, choose uh, different strategies but uh, the idea of of using theta score is is there that we can uh, suppose that uh, suppose that the outliers are um, in the queues of the normal distribution. Another uh, method to detect outliers is the interquartile uh, uh, range that is now at the Tukis method. In, the, in this case, uh, we have obtained the median, the median value of this distribution, and we can obtain the difference between the 
uh, 20, uh, 25% percentile to uh, 75% percentile. So in this uh, this um, this distance is is the interquartile range. Uh, we can uh, ensure that the interquartile range includes uh, the half of the distribution of the data. Okay. So in this case, we can create uh, some fences or limits. Okay. Uh, and the Tukis, the the Takis method uh, established that uh, this this limit is the 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 Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range to uh, the Q3 plus 1.0 times the interquartile range. And all of data that are outside this uh, this range uh, is considered as outlier. In this figure, uh, we can see a rain um, that is called rain cloud uh, plots, but that is an interesting uh, plot because it um, includes the distribution of the data. Okay, it includes the the, the standard, the mean, and the, st the standard deviation that is related with the theta score, and also it includes the interquartile range, uh, the interquartile limits, the fence that that uh, we have created. And this kind of figures that are uh, very informative. So here we can see that we have some more layers there and some more layers there. This is the artifact rejection. And now uh, <laughs> let's continue with the artifact uh, reduction. The list is very, uh, is very large, but uh, <laughs> I try to 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 be uh, more quickly. The first artifact reduction uh, method was the averaging in event-related potential. Tomorrow um, uh, we have a session uh, dedicated to event-related potentials, vale? and Gemma uh, and Elena explain us uh, uh, a lot of things about event-related potentials, but. Uh, as a summary, uh, one of the the main methods to analyze event related potential is the averaging. Um, the event related potential are synchronized by an external uh, stimulus. So, if we uh, align all the trials, all the data segments, and then uh, uh, average them, um, uh, we consider we uh, obtain that the the um, the AG data um, adds considerably and the noise diminishes. Okay, um, the data related to, to the stimulus uh, is, is maintained, and the data related uh, to noise or to other kind of uh, brain activity uh, is cancelled. Um, there are some variants of this uh, URP averaging. One of them is the weight averaging, in where the um, there are the epoch, the each epoch is uh, weighted uh, in, in uh, depending of the the non-stationarity noise uh, and amplitude in this epoch. There are some some coefficients to to calculate. And they obtain better uh, signal to noise radio, for example, for uh, a steady state response is a kind of, of um, a kind of uh, experimental task, but uh, uh, sometimes it's not the better options for other kind of uh, experiments. Uh, there are another kind of uh, averaging that is the another, another variant. Uh, Variant is the sort averaging. In this case, uh, we have, for example, if we have uh, all the all the trials, for example, 100 trials, we sort all these trials for the um, the low RMS values to the large uh, RMS values. That is, uh, we uh, sort for the noisy artifactual. Um, we consider that the noisy artifactual have large RMS values. 
And then, uh, in order, uh, instead of making the averaging process for the Huel trials, we have uh, we will have the average um, in, um, introducing one trial. And the first one is only one, the second two, three, four, five. And then when when we stop, when we have uh, obtained the maximum peak of the signal to node radio. So there are some trials that uh, does not enter, uh, uh, won't enter on the, on the average. Uh, another variant uh, is the median averaging. In this case, instead of uh, the mean, it uses the, the median. In this case, is um, uh, it's good when we have uh, infrequent large artifacts. For example, if we if we don't identify very well the outliers, okay, this method, the median averaging, is more robust than than, than the mean averaging, okay. If we have identified the, and eliminate the outliers, uh, maybe the performance is very similar. Another kind of artifact reduction uh, algorithm is the spatial filtering. In this case, the spatial filtering has the, uh, um, the purpose of uh, spatial filtering is to, to enhance uh, local activity, uh, to reduce the noise, and to identify uh, hidden sources. There are different uh, montages or, or strategies for, for the spatial filtering. One of them is the uh, bipolar referencing, and it is uh, common now as double banana montage. And for example, this is more, it's more usual for detecting uh, spikes on epilepsy uh, and epileptic data. Or is useful. Uh, this kind of uh, reference, um, medical doctors are very useful. Are very uh, normally use this kind of uh, montages. Uh, uh, but for example, uh, in my case, I'm not very comfortable with this kind of montage. I prefer to use a common average, for example. Uh, but it could be interesting if we have. Um, very localized the um, uh, the the kind of data that we can measure. For example, um, an epileptic uh, spikes, and we know that the, the epileptic uh, in this in this patient, uh, the epileptic is localized in the temporal zone. For example, we can uh, focus on this zone, and we, we can uh, use this kind of um, reference. Yes. It's the reference is uh, one electrode minus the one the other electrode. Uh, it's a double reference. It's, um, for this reason, if uh, for example this 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 electrode is very correlated with this electrode, so uh, in this montage we can observe uh, the. Um, some particular difference uh, between these electrodes. Uh, even it's, it's typical uh, uh, as well to have a double banana with uh, electrodes more uh, far away, for example. For example, frontoparietal connections or similar like that. Um, another kind of reference is the Laplacian. The special filtering is the Laplacian. In this case, it is useful to uh, to, uh, to analyze the local activity at one electrode, and it is the reference for this electrode, for example, is uh, the average of these four orthogonal nearest nearest uh, neighbor electrodes. Uh, this kind of uh, reference, for example, is um, is the most common uh, reference in BCI, for example, for uh, sensorimotor um, uh, analysis normally use uh, Laplacian or large Laplacian that includes more than four electrodes, but it's the, the most common. And it's, as well as bipolar reference, it's, uh, it's very um, it's suitable when you know, has a, a priori knowledge of the localization of the, um, of the activity. And then the last, um, for me, is uh, 
I I always use this this kind of uh, reference is the common average referencing that is more general. Okay, uh, uh, we can observe the the activity uh, at one electrode comparing to the average of all the other electrodes. Okay, but it, depending of the application, uh, it could be interesting to to perform some some of that. As well, uh, in addition to spatial filtering, we can perform some uh, filtering uh, in the frequency. Okay. Um, normally, uh, the, the data are restrained for uh, some frequency bands when we are we are interested. And um, um, when we obtain, we, when we have uh, some artifact that. Uh, in, a, in another frequency, uh, sorry, the the brain signal of interest has a frequency, and the artifacts has another um, another range of frequencies. For example, uh, the move band the, in the motor uh, task uh, for motor imagery or for um, motor cortical relay potential is very uh, restrained to this kind of frequency, the, from 10 to 13. Uh, um, uh, hertz and this kind of data is uh, it could be contaminated by muscular uh, signals. So uh, the muscular signal, uh, the spectrum of the muscular signal is higher, is between 20 and 30 hertz. So in this case, uh, using advanced, advanced path filtering, we can um, reduce the effect of of this kind of filter. And there are different strategies. Uh, we can perform some uh, band pass filter, low pass filter, high pass filter, or also a notch filter. When when we can use a notch filter, when we are in, our purpose is to to remove, for example, the uh, the power line noise, noise artifact, for example, a low a low pass a low pass filtering is very useful to exclude. Um, Muscular artifacts uh, performing a, a, a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of uh, 20 hertz. And for example, high pass filter, uh, we can use uh, them in order to reduce the ocular contamination, cutting on 4 hertz. Um, depending on the um, depending on the application, uh, it could be a good option. Uh, um, there are other times that the mus for example muscular or or um, low frequency are very related with the brain activity so in this case the band path filtering is not a good option for us then uh, let's continue with the linear regression um, in this case there are some assumptions for example the first is the um, we can absorb, uh, we, we assume that the effect of this artifact is additive. And in addiction, it is more important, we need one or more reference channels. What is the reference channels? Is there are some channels or some pieces of information that are representative of the inference that we can uh, remove. So, this kind of this method is very appropriate, for example, in order to try to remove the electro uh, the um, electroculographic uh, artifact. Why? Because we can we can mount we can uh, obtain the information of the electro electroculogram information by means of the um, EUG that uh, we have the vertical uh, EUG and the horizontal EUG. So. Um, Using this kind of um, equation, we can uh, estimate the true effect of the, the brain activity. Um, the measure the measure activity of the EEG is the is the sum of the real EEG and a contri uh, a contribution of the uh, um, ocular artifacts. So. Uh, we can obtain the true uh, EEG by subtracting from the, the measured data, subtracting this kind of, uh, of factor. What's 
is important in this case to estimate this con this constant uh, we have this kind of these signals we have these signals and only uh, need this this data and there are some some different uh, strategies for in order to to calculate this 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 k um, normally it's calculated by regression analysis for example using this square uh, approach but uh, I can see uh, then uh, we can see different uh, strategies for calculated <clears throat> in this case an example we have the EEG data we have the measure of the electroculographic information and we can we can see that we have an effect of this uh, vertical EUG uh, on the frontal on the frontal channels and an effect of the horizontal EOG on the um, on the lateral frontal lateral uh, channel. Then we can calculate this kind of this constant k um, using uh, a correlation and a regression, a regression uh, of less squares. And you can see, for example, that the vertical EOG and the constant between the vertical EOG and the frontoparietal uh, the channel FP, uh, frontoparietal one is there um, vertical with respect to uh, F set is there and this is the the, the different um, valors of uh, of uh, constant that we can obtain and then we can perform the 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 equation in this case it's important that we have two uh, kind of constant, one for the vertical EUG, uh, one for the horizontal EUG, we apply there, and we can obtain the, um, the corrected uh, measure. But here we have one problem. Uh, we are removing the information of the um, of the vertical and horizontal uh, EUG uh, to the to the data, but maybe or probably the EUG is contaminated or uh, contaminated by uh, brain channels. That is, uh, we are measuring the vertical and horizontal uh, ocular activity, but um, the, the, the brain activity is, a, is an artifact for this kind of data. So this is the bidirectional contamination, okay? We have a contamination uh, from EOG to the, the rest of the, of the EEG data, but we have also a contamination from the brain activity to the EOG. So for this reason, um, it's important to, to to be careful with this kind of, of analysis. So there are there aren't the there aren't a, a unique solution. Uh, there aren't the best the best uh, method to, to perform it. There are a lot of methods, and some of them works very well for uh, this kind of, for this kind of data, and some of them works better for other kind of data. Okay. <laughs> The next one, sorry. So we continue with the linear regression and an improvement that uh, we can perform is to um, to low pass the, the electroculogram channels before the application of this regression to calculate the the coefficients. In this case, uh, if we perform um, a low pass filtering uh, with a count frequency of uh, 7.5 hertz, we can obtain the um, this is the raw data for uh, FP1, the raw data for FZ, and the raw data for C3. C3. This is the the result the results for the regression, the original one, and this is the results for the filter rejection. So um, there are different papers that uh, indicate that this method 
um, it's better in this case to to try to avoid the uh, bilateral uh, um, effect. Another improvement of the linear regression is uh, is to the improvement on linear regression is uh, there are focus on the determination of this constant, this uh, k value. In this case, um, the adaptive filtering uh, try to uh, to um, the constant. This constant is uh, is uh, depending of the frequency. So in these cases, uh, there are different methods in uh, to calculate this uh, adaptive filter based on uh, linear regression. And in this case, um, some papers indicate that the recursive least square uh, that is quadratic in from complexity and, conver and convergence is the is the more the best stable uh, provides the best stability, efficiency, and uh, ensures the convergence. So in this case, uh, this is the equation to apply, um, and there are a lot of a lot of variations. So I think there are different variations, but one of them is the the, the more stable. Uh, here we can change for linear regression, and here uh, <laughs> we we I I will uh, present another kind of uh, methodology that is the blind source separation, and it is now as the coastal party problem. Um, when we have uh, incoming uh, information that uh, is higher than our capacity of, of process, for example, uh, for example, if uh, some of us, uh, we are uh, speaking in this, in this room, uh, we can hear uh, a noise, but it's not it's not easy to uh, try to identify each particular conversation. And this is the coastal party problem, okay? Uh, this, this coastal party problem um, has the fundament and uh, a neural mechanism that is the attention. Uh, the brain has um, a neural mechanism that is the attention, the selective attention on, in this case, the, the the, the task that we will perform is the uh, hearing, uh, selective hearing. Uh, that is a property that uh, allows us to focus on one task, for example, and filter the other stimuli uh, that there are irrelevant. So, uh, so in this case, the problem of the quality part is so there are people talking simultaneously in, in a room. Uh, there are no delays or no echoes, okay? And the, the challenge is to uh, try to separate uh, the, the person's voice um, on the, uh, um, to, to, to separate the different person's voice. And in this case, uh, we can, I, I will perform a, an experiment, I try to, I think I, I hope that it works well. First, we we will listen in um, an audio. Uh, this is the um, it's uh, it's the zoom of different kind of uh, of audios of of uh, of uh, conversation or different kind of um, audios, and there are a history. And the challenge is to try to uh, to focus on the the history uh, from this kind of of noise. I'm convinced that the there was a little bit of what I did to the got to finish the work. That is as true as major as you speak back to us. Your work has been full of working on the opportunity and only to be truly satisfied. So, is there any ability to support me? The only way to be taken is one little red button to understand. Someone, someone uh, has achieved to to follow uh, the history. You, have you heard? Now, I will um, 
we will uh, listen again this 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 clip of uh, audio, but it is introducing by the history. First, we will um, listen the history, then uh, all the conversation start, and uh, I think that uh, we can um, our our brain. It's it's um, bueno, let's start and then we comment. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived in a village near a big forest. Her grandmother had made her a beautiful red cloak with a big red hood. And so everyone in the village was calling her little red riding hood's mother. How about? It's easier right now, no? When you know where where you can focus, it's easier. If you don't have any idea of the of where we can focus, uh, you will only hear some noises uh, with without uh, any coherence, and it's difficult to follow. But then, uh, when you know the your focus the attention of this this speech this kind of uh, voice, it's easier to to filter the other noise and to try to follow uh, this kind of noise. Uh, even it's difficult to <laughs> to follow the, the the history. So this is the the um, the basis the um, the the challenge of blind sound separation. For example, here we have a uh, Matthew Luther King that is uh, doing a uh, uh, an speech. This speech uh, it's recording, but by different uh, microphones. Uh, this microphone is near, so the the intensity is is higher. This microphone is uh, is far away, so the the intensity is is lower. And what's happened if we have different kind of sources in the same room? It's it's one of these microphones um, has information for each one of these sources. Okay, this microphone uh, uh, the main the main source is the Martin Luther King, but this microphone uh, probably is the is the lower one. The challenge of blind soft separation is that we have this information. The EG is this information is the there are the microphones of the electrical voltage in our brain so uh we need to or we we will try to identify this kind of sources and in this case in this purpose because we are uh speaking of blown separation for artifact reduction uh, in this case uh, you can imagine that this is the eog contaminated by the uh, ocular um, activity and this is the EMG the contamination of the uh, muscular activity and the other one of the sources there are different brain uh, mechanisms we are interested on characterize this kind of source as this kind of source remove it and then uh, reconstruct the data without this kind of sources uh, this is the blind source separation there we have this observation that is the the eeg these observations comes from different sources that are mixed so the problem is to recover this kind of source signals for from these observations and even we have no knowledge about the sources uh, we have no knowledge about the missing process that is there only we have some uh, assumptions uh, one of these assumptions is that uh, this mixing process is stationary okay so uh, blind source separation tries to uh, deter determine a matrix uh, called a maxim process in order to obtain this kind of, of sources. 
which hypothesis uh, blind, super, blind source separation use? Uh, the sources are independent. Okay, this is important because there are, if there are uh, some dependence between sources, uh, maybe we can consider it as uh, only one source. And uh, the mixing process, but not the signals, the mixing process there is stationary. And there are another limitation. We need as many observations as the number of sources. So if we have, for example, um, an EEG with uh, 16 uh, channels, this kind of uh, estimation of the sources is low, is low precision, is, is, is worse than if we have uh, 64 channels. Okay? Because we can obtain a, um, a more a more accuracy on the on the source uh, separation. So the objective is to estimate these sources and estimate this missing process. Okay. How to use uh, the uh, blind source separation in in the brain data is uh, that that I said we have. This kind of data, EEG, including some information of the of the uh, electrocoulogram, we uh, apply the um, the brain source separation in order to estimate estimate the sources. Then we cannot identificate on these sources. We can identificate the what uh, which of these sources are related to artifact. Remove. For this reason, we have here we have an an interruptor. Uh, remove uh, the the sources related with artifacts, and then perform the inverse matrix in order to obtain the corrective uh, EEG. Uh, sorry. <laughs> What kind of uh, effects um, can we uh, determine of uh, of this uh, mixing source signals? Independence we have we have said before. The source uh, the, the the assumption is that the the source are independent. Okay, uh, we have uh, determined that um, according to the Celta limit theorem. Um, a distribution of data normally follows uh, a Gaussian distribution. So uh, we uh, we consider normality. But for example, there are some measures of normality. If we can check if the if our data is normal or is not normal, if our data are normal, we can use this kind of uh, this kind of uh, methods. And if our uh, data that are normal, because maybe we can use it. And then um, uh, we can consider also the complexity, okay? So, I'm tired. <laughs> and what is the the measure of statistical independence? How? we consider that the source are independent. Uh, in reality, we can know if two measures that are in, um, two sources are, uh, that are independent or not independent. But we can measure the correlation of, of, uh, of the signals. And we can say that uncorrelation is a weak form or independence. OK? This, if uh, we have performed some measures and determines that our data there are no correlated, we can consider a, wa a wake form of uh, independence. So we can consider there are an approximation um, in order to, uh, to to apply this kind of uh, uh, um, method. And in fact, we can also uh, determine that the independence uh, means that there are not Time, no, there are no, no types of dependence between those ran, two random variables. Okay, so uh, this is a, a weak, a weak um, condition. Uh, 
what kind of algorithms we can use in order to determine the this uh, this brain uh, source uh, blind source separation. One of them is the PCA, the principal component analysis. Uh, in this case, they determine the condition of independence. Uh, they determine that is the second order the correlation. So uh, they find uh, different orthogonal um, orthogonal data, ortho orthogonal uh, uh, kinds of data uh, from from our data, and they uh, try to rotate the original coordinate system in order to rotate them uh, for the direction with the maximum variance. This kind of um, statistical uh, analysis. But what's the goal of this uh, principal component analysis? Uh, normally, uh, the goal is to reduce the data dimensionality, but we can you can also use it for determine um, um, the the source of this these artifacts. Okay, um, it's 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 easier when when we uh, if I <clears throat> if I saw a representation is easier. In this case, we have an original EG data. And uh, this is the, the, the PCA component. As I can say, uh, we have 22 uh, observations, 22 signals. So we can obtain 22 uh, source uh, data. In this case, we, have, we can uh, identify that the component one and the component three are related with uh, the electro electroculogram uh, activity and also we have aquí, here we have some contamination of muscular activity here 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 and this is also um, a mark in the component five, four five and component uh, eight okay so uh, we can reduce we can uh, remove this kind of components and uh, reconstruct the the, the data. Another kind of method uh, to to calculate or to estimate the um, the matrix is the uh, independent component analysis. In this case, uh, there are different measures of independence depending on the algorithm. Uh, the Infomax, uh, the measure of independence is minimizing the mutual information. Fast ICA is uh, um, performs the maxi maximizing the non causality of the data. Uh, the SOBI is a is a um, second order measure, and Jade is a four order measure. There are different kind of, of algorithms. In this case, as well as uh, PCR, uh, ICA can decompose as small as at most uh, the the same number of sources than the same number of observations okay and here we have some secrets for a good ICA or even PCA uh, decomposition this is not magic okay if we don't have good good data uh, for example with low impedance it, the the more important uh, step is when we are registering the data and um, uh, uh, one premise is that we will try to have the, be the better data than that we can. So, uh, if our data is not good, ICA, uh, we can apply ICA, we can apply different kind of methods, we can apply uh, in the intelligence, uh, the EA uh, in order to, to, to try to rescue our data, but uh, there are no, no options. Um, and there are another kind of of um, um, of items interesting. For example, if we have very large artifacts, for example, a head movement that uh, it's uh, um, an artifact. Uh, um, for example, uh, f uh, ten or, or, or one hundred times the normal activity. Or for example, the TMS artifact as well. Uh, this kind of articles is better to remove it, uh, not try to reconstruct, because this kind of artifact uh, 
that are probably un, 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 unreconstructed. Um, the, the, the number of data needed to, to perform this kind of act, art, uh, analysis, um, the number of samples required uh, follow this um, equation. It depends on the number of channels, okay? Uh, it's the square of the number of channels multiplied by, by 20. Uh, so if we have less samples that this kind of uh, this number, uh, we can uh, try to to use another kind of uh, method. Also, uh, ICA tend to focus on where the data has the higher power. So it's interesting to high pass uh, the data before applying ICA. For example, with a, a cutout frequency of uh, 0.5 or 1 hertz, it's, it's enough to, to try to remove the, the, the continuous component, for example, of, of the data. And also, if we have uh, a bad channel, it's better to remove a bad channel uh, before the application of ICA. Why? Uh, because if we apply ICA with bad, this bad channel, probably a lot of sources are related with this bad channel. So if we remove this bad channel before, then uh, the, the, the ICA perform is, is better, okay? And here we can, we have an, an example of um, ICA perform. In this case, uh, we have the, uh, the activity of the ocular activity that is uh, it's present on the EEG in this in in the temporal, this temporal, this frontal frontal and temporal uh, electrode in this frontal frontopolar electrode. Uh, if we perform ICA, we can associate uh, some components with this kind of uh, artifacts. In, in this case, there are dead uh, vertical uh, um, eye electrode and horizontal uh, ocular um, uh, artifact. And then if we uh, remove this kind of components and then uh, recompose, we can obtain the, the corrective data. Another methodology is, uh, that uh, we can use, for example, a canonical correlation analysis. In this case, um, I'm sorry. Uh, in this case, um, uh, it finds the linear relationship between two multidimensional random variables uh, in, tr in order to try to maximize the correlation bet between two uh, multidimensional uh, data. It is useful when we are focused, for example, on one kind of uh, artifact. For example, if we are focused on muscle artifact, we can apply this kind of uh, algorithm. But if we are thinking about to analyze analyze the data and to and we are some conscious that there are different kind of artifacts, for example, ocular, uh, the, um, the, the 50 hertz uh, artifact, the muscular, uh, some sudoration, uh, it's better to, to use, for example, blind sub separation. Another kind of uh, methodology is the wobble transfer, um, in particular using the discrete uh, wobble transfer, because discrete wobble transfer is dividing the signal in um, dividing uh, the signal in, in frequency. There are a, a three. There are it, it creates a three, and then we can um, determine some coefficient. Uh, that only applies what to one of these subdivision. And uh, then when we reconstruct the, the signals uh, with the effect of this uh, coefficient, uh, we can remove uh, some, some artifact. This kind of analysis is, is uh, analysis in frequency. Normally, the other kind of analysis are focused on, on, on time mainly, by this kind of uh, uh, method is, is focused on on frequency properties of the of the artifacts, as well another uh, common uh, methodology is the empirical model decomposition. 
in this case, uh, empirical model decomposition uh, allows to obtain different uh, modes for this this data. Uh, this is more in, is interesting because uh, ASICA needs um, as uh, uh, the same number of sources and the same number of observation. In this case, empirical model decomposition uh, does not uh, require this this um, this kind uh, this this rule. For example, we can obtain different uh, intrinsic model fusions, this EMFs, from only one channel, for example. So uh, it could be interesting when we have uh, few observations. Uh, in addition, uh, there are another method that's uh, signal space projection that is based on. Uh, it's like we have a um, we have a, a characterization of uh, of the artifacts. For example, we know that the the electroculogram um, um, artifact has this characteristic. It is is located in the frontal area. Uh, it's uh, the the bigger amplitude is in low frequency, and it's uh, interested in, in the time. There are no no, no, no rules. So in this case, we characterize this kind of artifact and look for this kind of pattern on the signal. Okay, this this kind of method is is like a find of patterns in the in the data by using different kind of uh, different kind of, of uh, methodologies. For example, the time the time course, the frequency analysis, the the distribution of the topography. Uh, it's very complete this kind of uh, of analysis, and here and um, the last is a uh, is a comparison of this last um, it's a comparison between the main methods that we have present, and in this case, if we need a reference a reference channel, remember that the linear regression we need a reference channel. I was one of the drawback. Uh, for example, was for ICA or PCI, uh, it's not necessary for uh, um, empirical model decomposition as well. If it is automatic or if it depends on the interpretation of the of a researcher, this is important because for example, um, ICA uh, perform it, it has a good perform, but it requires. It requires the, um, the supervision of the contents by an expert. Now there are some uh, automatic or semi-automatic uh, tools that this this afternoon in the Hudson training we we will practice with them. But there are um, there are different kinds of uh, measures. Uh, also, uh, it's important if we can use it real time or no can or we can can use it in real time. It's important, for example, for for neurofeedback application or for VCI application, and if it could be applied to a single channel, okay? For example, regression, wobblet, additive filter, or empirical model decomposition. It's possible to apply it on a only one channel, but for example, uh, uh, blind cell separation needs uh, a lot of observation. So, uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry. For my for my English and for um, uh, I try to to do uh, the better that I can. And only one thing now: uh, there are turn to for for questions. But this is the 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 the, the bibliography of the presentation. This is at, at uh, turn for questions. But one thing: um, it's important that for the hands-on training session in the afternoon, it's important that everybody. Enter on the on the Google Drive uh, folder at at least download the the toolbooks that we use eGLAB and Fieldtrip and download the data. We can enter on the day one, half of training, and download all the data and all the codes. Yes, there are in the in this in this QR uh, QR or in the mail that uh, we have you you. You have received uh, as well. Well, it's important because this afternoon there are a lot of or, or there 
this afternoon there are a lot of uh, there are three sessions um, and in order to 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 improve uh, yeah, exactly uh, it's better that if all the data is downloaded and we are ready to to know about to practice about that thank you very much <laughs>